Hey guys, so now it's time to start making our tic-tac-toe game. So I've just opened up a brand new Flutter application and I'm just going to delete everything under this main function. Okay, and we're gonna, just going to build this out from scratch. So I've just got a void main, uh, the main function going to run my app, which I haven't built yet. So we're going to build this and say state list widget and that's going to be called my app and we're going to return a material app here. Now the first thing that I always do when I build uh, build apps is I just love to check this banner, to this debug, uh, debug banner to be false, which is basically just this little label um, in the corner here. So we're just going to turn that off. And for home, let's just call it home page. Now since our tic-tac-toe game, we're going to have a lot of X's and O's like flying around. Um, there's going to be a lot of movement, so we're going to use a stateful widget. Okay, and we're going to call that home page, of course. Okay, and instead of returning a container, let's return a scaffold. Okay, so just a lot of boiler, uh, boiler, uh, boiler plate code. Okay, so hopefully if I save this, yeah, it's just a blank cap with nothing in there. Okay, and we can start building our game inside here. So, first thing, I'm just going to change my background color to be like a nice dark, um, dark color. So, like a gray there, like gray of strength 800. And in the body, now for our tic-tac-toe game, we're going to obviously need a grid of some sort. Um, you can try to build like a 3x3 three three grid manually if you want um, but we can use this thing called grid view builder which is essentially just going to build it for us okay and grid delegate so for this one we're going to say silver this third one here sliver oh, sorry not silver sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count so basically since we know for our grid that we're going to build today it's going to have a total of nine boxes um, that's three by three we can specify that here with the cross axis count and set that to be three. So if I just reformat this code just to make it look a little nicer, um, we can add one more property, which is the item count. And we want a total of nine boxes. Okay, so we want a total of nine boxes and each row is gonna have three boxes in each row. Okay, which is gonna create our grid. Cool, so for our item builder, that's where we're gonna have to um, display like a physical object, like a physical uh, button. And for that one, I'm just gonna build a basic container. Okay, so build context and index. We're going to return, whoops, we're going to return just the basic container. Okay, and just so that we can see if our grid view builder is working or not, in the middle of the container, let's create a text widget that displays the number of each of the um, each of the uh, each of the boxes. Okay, so uh, starting from zero, we're going to cycle through um, to eight, creating a total of nine boxes. Oh, shut up, Siri. Um, Index. Now, since index is an integer, we're going to have to convert this to a string. And let's see if this works. Cool, so there it is. So zero, uh, zero all the way through to eight. Um, I'm just going to change this appearance a little bit so that it looks a little bit more visible. So in the style and the text style, let's change the color to be white. And let's make the font size a little bigger. Let's say, let's say 40. Okay, cool, much better. So there's our basic grid. Um, now when we play the game of tic-tac-toe, uh, it's gonna be helpful for us to have like lines in between to kind of show that it's nine different boxes. So a very quick way to solve that is let's just add a nice little border. Okay, so in the container, let's add a decoration. And we're gonna add a border here. And let's just add it to all four sides. And the color of the border, oops. The color of the border, let's say, is just a little lighter than the background. 
Okay, so I had the background at 800 and the border at 700. And there we go. Cool. So there's a nice little grid. Now, obviously, we don't actually want to display 0, 1, 2, 3, like these numbers here. Where instead, we actually, for now, want to display nothing. Right? But when I click on it, like if I click on a square, I want something to appear, either an X or an O. Okay, so, which means whatever object is inside here, it's going to change. Okay, so I can't just hard code nothing in here like this. Um, let's put in a variable, which I'm just going to call display x o, and we'll create that guy up here. So let's create a string called display x o, and for now we'll just spe um, specify it to be nothing. Okay, and so later we can just work with um, like wor uh, worry about changing this variable. Okay, now as we said before, we want something to happen after we tap on it, right? Which means we're going to have to add a gesture detector. So in this container, uh, let's wrap it with a widget and we're going to wrap it with a gesture detector. Okay, so it's going to be listening for any taps. So if it is tapped, we're going to make something happen. Now I'm just going to call it tapped and we can build that function below. Oops. Void tapped. And yeah, we can just build whatever's here below. So just to test out, just to test out if everything that we've got so far is working fine. If our button is tapped, if our button is tapped, I'm going to change this string which we call it display XO. I'm going to just change it to an O. Okay, and we'll just test to see if that, uh, to see if this is going to work. Okay, so let's just control save. So hopefully if I tap, if I tap a square here, whoop, nothing happens. Okay, so, yep, oh, that's because this variable would have changed, but it's very important in Flutter. We need to set the state. Okay, and then place it in there. Okay, so basically what this set state does in Flutter is you see this widget that says state. Every time this set state is called, it's just going to rebuild this. Okay, so it's going to build it, of course, when you start up the app, and it's going to rebuild it every time we set the state. Okay, so let's just save that. I'm going to run it cleanly. So if I click on one of these squares, uh, an O is going to appear. Cool, so it looks like our button is actually working. Okay, now obviously we don't want every square to show an X. Uh, we just want the individual ones to show uh, to show an X, right? So that's what we'll focus on in the next video. Sweet, I'll catch you guys in that one.